Today I'm going to be giving you three takeaways from launching an app that I've been working on for the past three months. And yeah, I think you should really listen to what I have to say. Hey everybody, what's up? Gary Simon here. So I've been working on this app for about three months now. And some of you may have known about it because I mentioned it on a live stream recently. And just today we did a very uh, soft launch just to get some initial users in for a uh, beta period. And this is a big day for us because we've been working on it for a long, long time. And so I'm gonna be showing you the app. And then afterwards, I'm going to give you three important takeaways uh, that I came up with during the development process and the design process uh, of, of making this app. And also, you know, they're not all technical. One one point is technical, another point is business, and another point is kind of just the emotional roller coaster of what it takes to, to build out an app and something that you should definitely do and also avoid. Before we begin, Linode makes it easy and affordable to host your website, your portfolio, your online store, and more on whatever technology stack you use. Getting up and running is fast and easy with one-click app installs like WordPress and Drupal. With backend access to your server, customization and scaling options are all but limitless. If you just need something small like an online portfolio to showcase your work, Linode has you covered. If you need to manage tons of clients' websites and reliably serve them to millions of visitors, Linode can do that too. So sign up using the link below in the description to get $20 in credit on your new Linode account. So first, I want to show you the app. Obviously, I'm a guitar player. They're always over there. If you check out my channel trailer, you'll see me jamming out guitar. Um, and I built this app here uh, with the help of a partner, which I'll get to in my third uh, point. Uh, and basically, it's a visual uh, app for learning the different scales and chords uh, for the guitar fretboard. And I'm not going to go over everything here. I know most of you don't care about this, don't care about guitar. But just to give you an overview of, you know, its main features, uh, you can change the scales uh, in that window. You can change all this stuff up here. Um, you can switch to chords. You can show scale degrees, triads, all that, turn it off. You can change the number of uh, frets that are shown on the board. So it's a pretty involved app. Um, there's backing tracks, which is really cool. So like, if you want to learn how to do lead guitar, you can play any of these backing tracks with the the uh, the, the scales uh, right in front of your face. And so it's also responsive. We, we spent a lot of work trying to make sure it works well. Uh, on mobile devices, so like on mobile phones, you know, you, you, you scroll it over and all that stuff. Uh, it's also a progressive web app, uh, PWA, and I have some, some points I'll probably make about that, although I didn't include that in my list of three. So my very first point that I wanted to make is the honeymoon phase will die. All right, so for me personally, I think this is what a lot of you guys uh, probably have dealt with in the past. Those of you who've had ideas and started to work on them, it's really exciting to work on a project. Uh, you, when you first start out, you have the idea. Maybe you're you're doing the whole thing yourself, or you're working with a partner. It doesn't matter. It's not a chore to work on the project. It's not a chore to get into Adobe XD or, or Figma to do the designs. It's not a chore to do the front end development, the HTML, CSS. It's fun. And that's the exciting part. That's the easy part. And for me, when I was younger, I had a bunch of ideas that I, I started. And, you know, I'm talking about 20 years ago or whatever, going back that far, where it was always exciting. You know, this, I, this is, I think this is universal. It's exciting for everybody. But the part where people get let down and I let myself down in the past is when the honeymoon phase dies off. And what that is, is the, the inspiration the motivation, the excitement of working on a new project, that dies. Even if it's a great project and it's a great idea and has all the potential in the world, that dies, there's nothing you can do about it. And for me, in this project, that happened exactly two weeks after starting the project and starting to work on the project by myself. And what was great is I understood now that I'm an older person, I'm 36 compared to some of you, I'm, I'm older, I knew that that was gonna happen because I've been through this enough to know that the excitement and you know, the adrenaline of working on it is going to wear off. And so for me, what did I do when that, that, that point happened? It, it happened right in two weeks. It was so crazy because like just, it happened in the middle of working on the project. Like something changed in my brain to where I was like, oh, 
this is a chore. This is this is a lot of work. And all of a sudden, I could feel myself. I was like, oh, I, I don't feel like working on it. What did I do? I kept working on it. You have to ignore as much as possible that feeling. So when you're working on a project that's going to be lengthy like this, it's going to be um, uh, when it comes to your emotions and, and your attachment to it and your excitement and inspiration, it's a roller coaster. At first, it starts all the way. You're, you're going uphill. It's exciting. Everything's rather downhill, I guess you could say, depending on how I want to look at it, if everything's exciting. But then at a certain point, usually maybe two to th uh, two weeks to a month after working on it every day, it gets not exciting. And then later on in a project, as long as you keep consistent, it will rise back up. The excitement will rise back up and I'll discuss why in a second. So you just work through it, even though it's boring and it might be monotonous, and it's a ton of work, you have to work for through it because otherwise, like I did when I was younger, I just quit. I would quit projects like an idiot. So don't do that. And what I can say in terms of the inspiration, the motivation coming back, well, that comes back when you get near the project completion. It comes back when you show it to people and they give you great feedback. For instance, uh, we posted it here on a Reddit music theory uh, site and it has 85 upvotes. We posted it this morning, actually. Um, people saying stuff like this, I, uh, damn, that's a hell of a tool. Great job and dedication. I, uh, let's see here. This is awesome. Thanks so much, dude. This is sick. So the positive feedback is what's going to give you motivation to keep on keeping on essentially with the project. Now, my next point has to deal with managing your damn CSS. All right, so this is obviously the more technical point that I wanted to bring up. Now, for me, you guys know I'm a YouTuber. That's really what my primary job is. That's what my focus is. I create two to three videos a week. And when I'm not recording and in those days that I don't upload a video, I'm probably you know, thinking of ideas and I'm coming up with the projects. And so I have a limited amount of time. And so the the, the projects that I create and I show you and I feature in, in the video tutorials, they're usually bite-sized, they're relatively simple. So when it comes to front-end development and showing you guys HTML and CSS, usually it's, it has to do with a specific property or just doing one landing page. I don't really show these really full projects, kind of like the project that I just worked on. So that means I've been kind of rusty and I've been neglectful in terms of how to manage uh, scalable CSS and good CSS practices when working with a full project like this that would have hundreds of rule sets. So what I ended up doing initially when I was working on it by myself, I, I was using uh, Vue.js. We converted it to a Nuxt.js project because we wanted the server side rendering for SEO and, and all that stuff. I, I was sticking everything inside its own component and I was I uh, put, putting, just importing a bunch of CSS files and I wasn't using scoped components in the, the scope CSS feature for it. And so what ended up happening, I'm working on, you know, the different elements of the user interface. And then I decide, oh, I'm going to change, I'm going to change my idea. This UI element is not working. This doesn't make sense. So I'm going to remove this here in the code on the template or whatever. I add new template code. And then what I did instead of removing the old unused CSS, because that's a pain in the ass, <laughs> I just kept on going. So now we're stuck in a, in a situation where we have all these files, these CSS files here, um, you, you, mainly in the styles form here, where we just have hundreds of rule sets that we have to, I, I have to really just filter through because some of them are going unused. Now, you may be wondering your, to yourself, you could probably just use something like post CSS in order to remove the unused CSS. Um, yeah, that's an option, but still when you're in the development environment and you're working on, on the CSS and adding new features or changing features in the site, you still have to deal with all this stuff here, all this CSS that you have to work through. So it becomes a pain. So the takeaway here is when you're dealing with, you're writing your CSS, make sure that when you're changing up the UI, you get rid of your damn unused CSS uh, rule sets and also 
You could take advantage if you're working on something like Vue uh, or Nuxt. You could take advantage of the scope CSS uh, in your individual components. So make as many components as, as possible so that everything's really well kept together. And that way your CSS will be just exclusive to those components. All right, so my third and final takeaway is to delegate. You need to know your strengths and you need to know when to let part of the project go and to, to either outsource or hire somebody or bring on a partner who's better at that one specific thing. How many times have I heard that somebody says, I'm a full stack developer? You're probably not a full stack developer. I'm sorry, it's just the truth. Just because you took a few tutorials and maybe you did one simple project that had a back end uh, and you did a little bit of HTML, CSS, and maybe a little bit of graphic design, identity design, whatever, that doesn't mean you're a really proficient full stack developer. And I think just saying you're a full stack developer, even though if you're like a beginner, that doesn't make sense. You should be proficient at all these areas to really claim the title of being a full stack developer. That's just my opinion. For me, I've claimed that I'm a full stack developer, but I'm not gonna say I'm proficient in, enough in all the areas to really, truly claim that title. I'm a much better UI UX guy, uh, an identity designer, and an HTML CSS guy than I am somebody who's really proficient at something like JavaScript, uh, Node.js, and backends, and stuff like that. But nonetheless, I wanted to take on this project myself just to see if I could do it. So I got about two to three weeks in, and I realized, you know what? I can't do it. I got fairly far, but then I realized with the notation system and everything, it got too complex. And so that's when I was realized, I was like, okay, I have to delegate. I either have to hire somebody or outsource. You didn't bring somebody else on or partner um, in order to make this project a reality. Because I could have released it the way it was that I had it, but the notation was slightly wrong in some areas. And I realized I wouldn't be able to fix it. Uh, but who wants to release a half-assed project? I mean, it's crap, right? So what I decided to do is one of my live streams, I just, I threw it out there. I said, if anybody's listening who knows maybe a little bit of music theory and who is a good coder, uh, spe specifically with Nux.js, uh, JavaScript, then hit me up on Discord and we'll see if we can make this work. And fortunately, somebody, somebody did. And so that person proved to be extremely valuable uh, to me and I realized that once they got in and started refactoring my code, my code was shit for the most part, I I was like, okay, now this is gonna become a much better app in the process because I decided, to, I decided to put my ego at the door and I just allowed them to take over that aspect so that I could focus on what I'm great at, which is the whole UI, UX stuff and identity design and all that. And so now going out, I what happened was, just bringing on somebody who was much more proficient in this specific area opened up so many more doors. He didn't just fix the issues with the notation is system. He fixed many other things and also implemented a lot of great features that I wouldn't have on my own. So being able to expand your team just from the, your single person yourself to two or three or four people is gonna make the system and your project much better. Now, does that mean you all automatically have to get a partner no, for me, I kind of lucked out. It, it seemed like a really good fit uh, in terms of where we both were in, in terms of our knowledge of music and just uh, our time available. And so it's worked out very well. Uh, if, if possible, outsource, hire somebody else just for that specific task and get it finished. All right, so those are the three takeaways, which are, you know, the honeymoon's gonna die, the inspiration's not gonna last. You have to ignore it and work through consistently, and that inspiration, the payoff, the motivation will come back. Also, manage your CSS. Of course, there's probably a lot of other technical takeaways that could be made about such a project, but that was my main takeaway. Manage your CSS and also delegate. Know your strengths as much as possible and leave your ego at the door. Have people come on and help you.